Hi, this is Sally Trainer, and this is the watercolor series. And today we're doing another exercise of uh, mistiness and suggested snow. And uh, it's a different uh, aspect this time. We're going to be working on paper that we wet as we go along rather than soak on both sides. So let's paint. This is what we're doing today. And it's kind of an unfinished painting, but I I keep thinking, I don't know exactly what I want to do with it. I've done this before, and I've done different things with it, and I've liked it very much. But my point in this painting is that we do the sky, and we lose edges on damp paper, just damp, and then we wait for it to dry a bit. And then we do these treetops and we use a whole bunch of different colors in here and we maybe do some spraying and then we spray down here to lose the edge and it gives us something to work again. We can then do a foreground if we want or we can just do this or we can do whatever we want. This is, this is a piece that um, you can make your own very, very readily. So let me just uh, show you how I do this. First of all, we have to tear our paper, which I just folded wrong. You know, sometimes I am my own worst enemy. Now I have an eccentric piece of paper because of my carelessness. I usually try and be so careful lining up edges, but we won't worry about that right now. Let's talk color. I am going to use, um, actually, oh, here we go. I'm gonna waste paint, although I am gonna use some of those colors. I'm gonna use a laser and crimson. Probably some Quin Gold. We'll wet it just in case we want it. Um, I'm going to use Antwerp and Windsor Blue Red Shade because Antwerp is not a you know very heavy tinting color. Doesn't have a lot of strength to it. And let's see. Let's toss in some brown matter alizarin just in case we want it. We'll wet it so we have it. So let's go back to our prototype, which I'll post for you. Let's see how we want to approach this. I'm going to mix up some puddles. I know I want to have some of that nice, maybe I, uh, let's say add a little cobalt too. Cobalt with Antwerp um, is lovely. It's a beautiful color. And let's come into that with some alizarin, but let's dull that alizarin down, It'll make it into a violet. But we also need some regular just plain alizarin. And we need a gray. So how do we do that? We have alizarin, Windsor Blue Red Shade, how do we how do we gray this down? What Complete do we... the triad. Okay. So what's 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 missing? It's the yellow you're using. Yeah. Yellow. <laughs> yeah. Gold. It's yeah. Green it's... gold. Yep. So there we go. There we go. Um that's a little greeny. Oh, yeah. I don't want that. Well, let's come Brown back. With more red, more blue. 
Okay, that's a little more neutral. Okay. okay. All right, so I've got my thirsty sponge. And I'm just wetting the sky area right now because I want to have dry paper to use. And let's see what I can make happen here. Antwerp, cobalt. I'm putting that right next to that gray. Let's come in with some of the alizarin. I drop it on. Paint next to it. Let's go back to the gray. back into that alizarin piece, a little stronger pigment. Let it move through there. And maybe do the same thing with that gold. Eh, I don't like that so much. Let's take that out. into that area with some of the blue. I'm going to come into this puddle and I'm going to make it more, have more value. And I'm going to make that sky a little more dramatic. Now, one of the things I'm doing is, even though I'm doing some drop in color, I'm also layering color next to color and letting it merge. So let's just get rid of this edge here, but we'll do it with the thirsty sponge because I don't want to introduce a lot of water to it. So now I have this puddle that um, is a, a nice dark, dark. And I have this wet sky and I want the silhouette to be crisp. I have to have dry paper for that. So let's go ahead and dry this. I'm not gonna take a lot of drying because I started out with um, the thirsty sponge rather than wetting it with a brush. So I had a lot of control over the water to start with. Okay, let's switch to smaller brush. And we'll use the bigger brush also. So now, oops, that wasn't good. Here's where we're, um, what I've uh, asked Anne to do in what um, she was developing is discrete brush work, okay? Blot your brush and start making your lines. Now I'm not just going like this. I'm going, I'm starting with that main trunk and I'm making what comes out different shapes, different sizes, slightly different directions. And let's just keep doing that. different heights i'm i'm letting the brush add design work to my to what i'm um accomplishing here 
So your brush is perpendicular to the paper. And what you're getting is variation when you press more down on the brush. So more of the brush is opposed to the paper. I have to do this rapidly because, because the next thing is going to be another way of approaching this. You have to keep doing this. This is almost like um, Sumier painting in, in its own way. Now, this is one of those places where some of you might want to put birds in, but don't. going to use my mister at the base of the trees. And I'm going to add some other colors. Get a lot of variety um, where you can in your tree line. And use as many brushes as you have, uh, as you want to add colors. And come into this with pure color and let the color uh, go into the your puddle of, uh, of gray. And use gravity. Get some variety into that band of all different colors. And you've wet uh, with with your with your sprayer. So now everything is wet, but you no longer need those discrete shapes at the top of the tree line. And I need a bigger puddle of gray. Just got out a little out of hand here. I can come back into that and um, reestablish the tree line later. I like adding the pure color in here and letting those colors blend. There's just something very interesting about that. A little bit fanciful. I'm more dropping color in now than um, and painting it on. Sally, did you spritz the paper before you started adding those colors? Yes, I started adding the colors, then I spritzed the paper, and now I'm adding more color. Okay, thanks. And let's take the thirsty sponge and get rid of this edge down here. We want to let that bleed out. And the thirsty sponge will let the bleed be a nice, gentle bleed. Now, I had said that I thought I would use some of the brown matter, and maybe now's the time to do that.
So I lost some of the crispness of that, um, the top. So I want to come back into that. The top of the trees. <clears throat> At the top of the tree line, yep. I want to reestablish the crispness. But now I have to get back to the value that I used to start with. So <laughs> I have to make the make the gray and then make it a lighter gray. Now don't, don't don't if you if, if you've made the mistake that I did don't go crazy getting back to that tree line but If you think these are going to be too dark, you can blot them um, with a paper towel or a Kleenex, and that'll um, that'll reduce the the emphasis. And remember, you're going to slap your wrist if you start to do just all repetitive strokes. And one of the things that I like to do is lose the bottoms of things so that it's indistinct where they feed themselves into whatever the background is or their bases. So I just do that with a, a, a damp brush. Actually, a bristle brush um, that I use for that. One of the things I have found when I do these, and I I play with them um, because they're little mind games that I like, is um, after I get this tree line in, um, I have all kinds of options to do with this hazy bunch down here. And it can be a, a cliff. It can be a heavily forest area, forested area, just like what the tree line suggests. It can be bare rock. It can be all kinds of things that I can uh, imagine and, and do something dramatic with. And that's what happens down here too, as I further develop these. And we'll work on these again, probably next week. But um, as you can see, uh, you can come back into these and correct mistakes because it's all so hazy that it doesn't matter. And this can also be snow down here which is what led me to think about doing this exercise today because we're still kind of working on suggesting snow. Hey, 
these are the two that um, that you show that, that I um, had um, saved onto Hope Studio. <laughs> this is whence the lesson came from originally. And um, this is an older piece and it has, of course, what we were doing. And um, this is kind of middle distance. These are um, far, fars, far away distance. But you see the difference uh, between these two. Uh, maybe it's easier to see in this. So the difference is in the size of the trees. These smaller trees put them much further away from the viewer. So what happened next was, and I always had this intention when I did this piece, I put into the foreground a row of boulders and I lost the edge on the top of the boulders. I scraped to get the boulders. I lost the edge on the bottom of the boulders. I did some dry brush work here and here. And I turned these paintings with that big white area on the bottom, although I've never disliked that big um, negative space at the bottom of these, I've always kind of enjoyed these. But now I have this painting and uh, this interests me also. I've, I've had this painting for some time. I haven't done anything with it beyond this um, because uh, it kind of is a, a little mystery to me. And what I would like us to do, and we've got plenty of time to do this, I want us to do on a new piece of paper for the back of something that you hate, but not on your notebook, because you might produce a masterpiece, of course. So I would like us to do a top and a bottom all together. Okay, let's talk color. I quite like the alizarin crimson in this. So let's get that wet. And I like the brown matter in it. So this is gonna be a primary triad, but not limited. So I've wet two reds. I like to have Antwerp going on in this because there's something about Antwerp um, in snow scenes that I really enjoy a lot, or snow scenes or sea stapes or whatever. But I also like granulation, so I'm wetting French ultramarine as well. And there's a yellow. Let's go with the thin gold again. Oh, I forgot to show you my my um, brushes. I prefer to use bristle brushes. Uh, let's see. I prefer to use bristle brushes. This is a, a little itty bitty one. It's a two um, and this one's a four. Um, you'll see they have different length hairs on them. And actually, my number two, I cut off about half of it. So when I wet it, it's very stiff. But I use these as my erasers. And I find I can really be very refined and careful with these as tools. I can get very directly into very discrete areas rather than broad swaths that I'm trying to erase. And I have... I have other bristle brushes, like I use this one if I've got a big an area, area that I'm trying to erase. But I can be so gentle with this on white, on um, damp paint or damp paper uh, that's dry paint um, hey, hey. that I'm, I'm leaving the sizing. Um, I mean, I could get it off finally, but I, uh, because I can be so discreet with these brushes, it means I don't have to stay in there for a long time to remove what I'm trying to get rid of. I don't like to do things that that disturb my surface. And I, let's see, I, I probably erase less than most of you do because I'm, I'm more tolerant of 
things that seem like accidents that I uh, um, I come to like. So it's more important to me not to get rid of whole big swaths of something. Unless it's a big commission that I've spent a lot of time on. Okay. Almost forgot for prepping my my thirsty sponge. Okay, so let's get a mixture going here. Um, I want a gray. And I've got a puddle now of alizarin crimson and brown matter. I'm adding Antwerp to it. I'm getting a violet. And how do I get rid of that violet and go to a gray? I'll put some yellow in it. Yes, that's true. Here is my nice dirty brush. <laughs> I'm not going to do what you think I'm going to do. I'm going in with a fresh brush and putting some yellow into this. <laughs> now I've got a brown. So let's get rid of that by coming back in with more blue. Uh, this is a nice color. It's still kind of warm. Oh boy, this is nice. Now I put a little bit of French ultramarine in there. Yeah. And now I'm going to take my thirsty sponge and just dampen this paper. Just the top. I don't want to have it wet on the bottom yet. I'm going to come pack in here. I can do the sky. And let's just come into that sky with some, okay, come in with uh, some Antwerp. We're going to make the sky a little more dramatic than we have before. Because now I know you're brave, brave people. And maybe I'll just come into that with some of the brown matter. And now let's see, it's already drying out there. I'm getting an edge right at the bottom. Okay, now let's, um, let's increase the saturation of the puddle. So we'll come back with all the colors we've got going on in there. Once again, it's interesting how rapidly it goes to violet. And let's give it some of that yellow to take it back to, okay. And now let's use um, a brush over which we have lots of control to start doing our tree line. Um, I've got a lot of water in the sky still, so I'm going to start below that. Got a lot of water everywhere, as it turns out. But that's okay because... I'm going to switch to a smaller brush. I have more control over that. Um, so this is the this is the farthest away trees. And they'll be they'll be very indistinct, and some will stick up into the sky more than others, and they'll just be shadows. And I'm kind of using the brush just as, as a, to make um, like reedy shapes almost, but not big, not large. Now let's dry things off a bit. Okay, now it's still wet there.
So now this is still kind of damp in the sky. but not very, so I'm getting much more distinct shapes that are closer to us. And I'll move again to a bigger brush in a minute. But I, I love doing just these little calligraphic strokes that are interesting to me. And if I was being terribly careful in putting them on, they would end up being much too regular and much too important by themselves. And make sure that you bring the trunks down below the line that's happening. And now let's do something that will cause the bases to become part of the terrain. I'm just wetting I'm leaving some white now. This is different from the way we've done it before. And any place you need to, just extend that wetness up into the tree lines so you get, you don't want it to be just a, you know, a, a regular streak of white. Now we want to dry it again. Let's do another layer of trees. Uh, let's move to the bigger brush. <laughs> this is this is a number eight. Let's do some with a little more color in them. Went back to the smaller brush. As soon as you impose some new things on top of the more distant things, they get to be closer. I'm having I'm having a marvelous time here. A little more red. So I'm building um, the the layers, the perspective layers, on top of those first things that I put in. So let's just add a little interest with a little bit of just water spurts down, see what happens. Oh yeah, nice stuff, nice stuff. I'll come back to them in a minute. I'll take off some of that excess water that I just sprayed on there. And let's think about what we want to have happen in the foreground. Let's put in, let's make this puddle a little more saturated again. So back to all the colors we were using. You see how cleverly every time I do this, I go into the dark colors first. <laughs> so I have to mix, you know, get to that other brush and add the yellow. All right, what we want to do is 
just have enough saturation here. So we're going to end up with um, our ability to scrape. So let's give ourselves some some potential boulders. And let's bring in all our colors separately. So let's keep adding color to this so we get the, you know, the kind of thick paint that we need to, to scrape off. And we can add as much paint as we want at this point. Just make this a really, really strong puddle. And I've got all the colors in this. And this actually has five colors in it. Now I'm going to cheat a little bit by drying it. Remember, um, we have to have a certain viscosity to this puddle before we can scrape. So this has to be still damp, still available, wet pigment, but no standing water. So just as the sheen is starting to leave the paper. Let's give ourselves some rocks. Not yet. Let's get rid of that bottom edge because we don't know what we want to have happen there. What we want that to be. Might be water, might be snow, might be all kinds of things. So in some of these ways, um, this is um, an extension of our seascapes. And if we want, we can put another layer of rock here. So we're going to do a mass that's a boulder or some such. Let's add some color to that because we can. And this paper is drier, except for a couple of places. But let's take our thirsty brush and lose this edge. And this edge. Then let's cheat again a little bit. Just dry that a bit. So we can scrape that. And again, make ourselves some boulders. They're a little bit bigger because they're closer. Oops, I overdid it there. Now there are all kinds of unfinished parts of this. Like I thought I had lost this edge, but I'll go back in and wet it a little bit because that's all non-staining stuff. Mm 
this area needs to be addressed because there's no transition from that to this. This is pretty far away and this is pretty close. So something has to happen in here, but it has to be dry before I do that. So, I'm all right. Ready. So I've got negative space here, um, down here, which I'm not worried about. I can always come back to this, but I've got negative space here that I'm calling negative space. It's white, doesn't have anything in it, but white leaps the space. It's very definitive. It draws the eye. I have to do something with that. I also have an area here where my tree line ends, and I'm not sure I like that, um, but I'm not sure I don't like it. I don't like it over here where I have just one little ghosty tree here. And so right now, that's what I'll go ahead and correct immediately. So I'm going back to this little this little teeny brush because it gives me those interesting shapes. And this is very far away, remember? So I'm definitely adding little, little strokey things. And they are a little closer than what's already there. So they're darker. And I'm going to take these right off the edge of the paper. I'm going to add a few more cross strokes to some of this stuff that is closer to us because I enjoy this brush and the strokes it makes so much. And you're paying me to do this, so I'm giving you extra strokes. So this is just adding another dimension to some of these things and bringing them closer to us. And I'll drop their trunks into this area down here. So that'll change things again. I don't know how much of that I'll do, but we'll see what happens. Yeah, I'm liking this. This is this is changing the dimensions of what's happening up there and how far away things are. I'm trying to be careful not to let the the base of these trees be too assertive because I'm trying to avoid any of the um of the of the soldiery things that um we can see happen if I if I don't pay attention to that. All right. That, um, I think that might be everything we want to do to that. See one area that's just a little too dark to exist. So I will blot it. Yeah, yeah, let's sit back in space better. This can be darker because it is closer to me. Uh, maybe just a few more. Okay, now let's look at what's happening here. Wait, uh, let me, yeah, let's do a few things like this over here. Just little spidery things. Just to suggest what's going on back there. So let's look at this. What are we going to do with this? So I'll come in with just clear water. And I'm going to wet right down to the rocks. So I've, I've wet right to the top of the rocks. And now let's go back to our mud puddle, which is pretty much what it is at this point. Let's rehydrate it. And parts of my puddle are warmer than other parts because it has spread out over my palette. And I do want all of those colors to play a role here. So let's just start, oops, didn't wet up high enough there. So 
So we're going to make some things happen with color. Some place we're going to leave some hard edges, but mostly not. So I've added, yeah, I don't like these hard edges up here, so I'll take those out. Very gently, so I'm not disturbing the paint underneath. Ooh, I'm liking this now. Um, I'm liking coming in with that blue. Now I'm dropping the color in. And so we have gotten rid of that area that was white and it was very attractive, which means we had to look at it. Let's see what else we can drop in all by itself or just grade a bit. Let's come back in with some more of the of the reds. This is wet, 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 wet. I'm mostly dropping this in, and I'm not brushing it on. So I'm letting it go into and meld and merge and be part of what is already there. I don't like as much red as is there now in uninterrupted. So let's come back in with more of the Antwerp. Again, I'm dropping it in. Do some more up here. And to answer the question about what to do with the sky, you can gently, very gently with clear water, wet that sky broadly, farther beyond where you are wanting the color to go. But now it's really wet and coming back in, I think I want to just come in with some some of the darker grays. And you can drop color into the sky at this point and make it a little more dramatic. Try not to brush it on because that'll disturb the paint that's there. Try to drop it in, let it flow off your brush. And there's some areas that I missed with the water but you can also um, get dry edges that you want to. So that's a much more dramatic sky than we had before. But as long as you do it gently, um, and it doesn't matter whether it's cold press or hot press, you're gonna be able to do those layers. Okay, so this is my tool for picking out paint to get back to white paper. It's a little trowel, it's very sharp. Is this? No. It's a tool for, for working in other media, but I use it for this. And like this guy right here, I'm gonna go back to paper and I'm just getting little bits of um, not not much white, but little little titches of white, like spray. And then I'm gonna do some right at the edge of the this rock to um, get that foam there. Often get at the at places where. Hard things meet water. And I'm just dragging it to get that happening.
I want to do, and I want to do it when I've still got this uh, puddle of paint here that's all those right colors. It's just showing the kind of thing I mean by just adding just very, very bitty um, detail here. So um, I'm using a round brush. I blotted it. I have a medium value. And I'm just going to dry brush right in here a bit. So that's that area. And now let's go ahead and get a wetter brush and just do some suggestion of the water. And I might change this later, um, but I'm not intending to do much more than this. And let's bring some of that up into here. And I think that's sufficient. I might do a little more scraping up here to have some of those uh, flecks of white up here, probably a little bit more here, but that's it. Um, that's going to be, it doesn't need more than that. I'll look at this uh, for a while to see if it's too much or if it, if it works for me. Because like everybody, not all my strokes are perfect. Dropping a little bit of darker pigment into this while it's wet. Change it a little bit. That's it. This needs a little bit of something here, but I'll have to think about this a little bit more. Definitely, I've got some things that need a little lightening. Let's take them down a bit. There, that's a little better. Um, I could do more of that, but I don't think I want to. And I might come back into this to get back a little bit of the detail, but um, I'm not completely satisfied with this and I will do a little bit more at, at the base of this rock and this rock, um, but um, it's almost done, it's almost there. I don't want the water to be such a such a feature that um, you know I, I'm not gonna do spin drift or anything in it. Okay, and I'm gonna have to look at this for a while, so um, it'll it'll come back to you, um, but not today.